is a group of four, Jeannie Brown, Samir Naji, Mike Brown, and Avital Abudi with time seated by Melissa Chalchicot, Marcus Rodriguez, Trin Lee, Elizabeth Guzman, and Scott Hark, which gives you nine minutes, which I'll put on the clock and you'll manage your own time. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Jeannie Brown and I'm representing the League of Women Voters of San Diego. The League is here as a member of the Community Budget Alliance, a diverse coalition which advocates for increased community input, transparency, accountability, and equity in the city budget. At this moment, I'd like to have the CBA members in the audience please stand up. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Um, we all believe that communities need to be consultant, consulted and involved in budget designs and decisions, and we commend the City Council for making strides in this area. While there have been significant improvements, we believe a great step forward would be the implementation of the participatory budgeting pilot program and its potential expansion to the rest of the city. This would make the budgeting process more understandable and accessible while giving residents the ability to cast a vote to help prioritize spending. Additional members will speak on this issue in more detail later. We thank Council for considering our program, service, and project priorities, which was submitted several weeks ago. This year, the CBA has identified the need to invest in several specific programs and services, including the Youth Development Office, Living Wage Enforcement, and Climate Action Plan. We have also identified many improvements to parks, roads, and sidewalks that need to be addressed in long-neglected neighborhoods. We look forward to continue working with the Council and the City to look for ways to improve access to the budgeting process while meeting the needs of San Diego's diverse residents. And now we'll hear from Samer. Hello, Council. Again, my name is Sam Naji. I'm a resident of District 3, coalition organizer for the Community Budget Alliance at the Center on Policy Initiatives. I want to begin by thanking all of you, President Gloria, City Council, Council staff, for putting on this evening hearing. It makes it much more accessible for community members to come out and advocate on their needs. Um, I'd also like to thank the mayor's staff for being here uh, to take back our comments to the mayor's office. So tonight we're here to ask Council to support a pilot participatory budgeting program in three districts. We're asking for a commitment of $1 million in each council districts 4, 8, and 9 for a total of $3 million. We believe that a portion of the fiscal year 14 surplus could serve as a source of funding for a pilot program in fiscal year 15. Fiscal year 14 is proje projected to end with excess equity of $14 million, which is equal to 1.3% of the general fund revenue. Um, or it's just a we're asking for a little more than a quarter of 1% of the general fund, which is a small sum when compared to the potential benefits of participatory budgeting. I want to give a brief explanation about what participatory budgeting is and why we feel it's an opportunity for our city at this time. Avital Abudi and Mike Brown will speak more about the need for participatory budgeting from the perspective of community residents. So participatory budgeting is a supplemental program that helps make the budget process more democratic and resident-driven. It is a process that is designed by a steering committee made up of members of the local community, and it is inclusive of underrepresented communities, and a critical feature of participatory budgeting is that it has designated funding in which participants are the decision makers. Through town halls and community meetings, residents will brainstorm project ideas, and then their delegates that they select will work with city staff to convert them into solid project proposals. Finally, community members will vote to determine which projects will be funded. As residents participate, they learn about governance and experience firsthand how difficult it is to prioritize spending, which is something you all do every single day. Ultimately, participatory budgeting will lead to stronger communities and will mean a better, fairer, and stronger San Diego. Like community planning groups, the, the Council has made significant progress in opening up the budget to the public, and it has increased ways in which public input is taken, and we thank you for that. Uh, but participatory budgeting is not seeking to replace the current efforts. It's seeking to just enhance them. Um, participatory budgeting has been implemented in 1,500 cities globally, including New York City and Chicago. In California, San Francisco and Vallejo are implementing participatory budgeting. And a number of cities 
that are pursuing this innovative way of government will hopefully grow thanks to an investment made by the California Endowment. And Steve Eldred, the project manager at City Heights for Cal Endowment, will be here to answer any questions if you all have any. So with so many cities proving the success of participatory budgeting, again, we ask City Council to commit to a pilot program in Districts 4, 8, and 9. Let's make our neighborhoods more vibrant and our democracy more democratic. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Council President and Council Members. My name is Mike Brown. I'm a 12-year resident of, of what is now District 2. I am on the board of the Claremont Town Council and member of the San Diego Organizing Project. I am here to support implementing a particip participatory budgeting pilot program in San Diego's underserved neighborhoods as a first step to bringing this program to the entire city. While on the Town Council, it has been my pleasure to serve residents of the Claremont neighborhood and listen to their concerns. I have worked alongside other active members of my community in the hope of seeing local concerns addressed and resolved. Yet despite years of engagement, we have found it difficult to get our needs met under the current processes. Participatory budgeting is a program proven to aspire residents to gather and take part in important and difficult funding decisions. It also provides community members insight into the resources available to address neighborhood needs while strengthening relationships between residents and city staff. Participatory budgeting is a resident-driven process that makes the budget more equitable and fair, more transparent, and which has been successfully implemented all over the world. So I ask each of you to make participatory budgeting a reality in San Diego. As a result of your leadership on this, people like me across the city can have a more direct role in directing how our tax dollars are spent and bringing improvements and enhancements to our neighborhood. A pilot program will take us one step closer to a citywide process, and that would be a good step forward. Thank you. Avital, and I'll speak to you. <laughs> My name is Avital Abudi. I'm an organizer with the Greater Logan Heights Community Partnership, which is a member of the Community Budget Alliance. And I would like to ask Council to provide the $3 million to fund participatory budgeting pilot program in Districts 4, 8, and 9 in this fiscal year. As a resident and community organizer, I can confidently say that the current budget process is far too inaccessible for San Diegans, ordinary San Diegans. Although the city has made efforts to increase resident input, there's still room for improvement. Currently, most residents don't know how to get their concerns on the priorities list to be considered for funding in the budget. There are no direct lines of communication between city departments and most residents to determine what those priorities should be. Ordinary working residents just don't have time to frequently attend hearings and meetings at City Hall. And most of them don't know about meetings and or are too overwhelmed by jargon to fully participate. There is no clear way to get residents' input early on in the process, um, before the budget hearings, and how projects are decided upon is not transparent enough and inclusive of community groups and residents. Participatory budgeting would enhance the process because it brings a wider and more diverse set of perspectives into the budgeting process by allowing residents' input in designing and prioritizing actual projects. This allows residents to better understand and participate in budgeting matters. The participatory budgeting timeline gives residents the ability to brainstorm ideas and create project proposals by working with the city staff. Residents learn about and participate in true democracy, voting on where their tax dollars go, and therefore knowing that even if their own proposals aren't funded, money will be going to projects that are top priorities for their neighbors. All of this encourages greater trust in government and participation in other civic processes. So I urge you to consider funding this pilot program for participatory budgeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert Nuttoff, followed by Katya Rodriguez, followed by Monica Munguin, and Robert Nuttoff has time seated by Kara Green for a total of two minutes. Great. Uh, good evening, uh, Council President Gloria, members of the Council. Again, my name is Rob Notoff. I am a resident of Mission Valley, a researcher and policy analyst uh, at the Center on Policy Initiatives, and also a member of the Community Budget Alliance. And I'm here today to speak about two items real briefly. Uh, the first of which is to fund, uh, in regards to funding the two additional staffing positions for the Living Wage Office. Uh, earlier this year, you all funded um, unanimously to uh, amend the Living Wage Ordinance because you shared the opinion of the hundreds of people who showed up here en masse to, uh, to, sh to share their support uh, for the changes needed to make the, the policy uh, more true to its original intent, which was to maximize its effectiveness. Um, the new policy furthers the original intent of the living wage ordinance, which included creating jobs that lifted workers out of poverty, rewarding good actors who comply with the law, bringing fairness and accountability to low-road employers, and maximizing public tax dollars and resources. And in passing the approved amendments, the City Council reaffirmed its commitment to responsible employment and raised the bar for what economy-boosting jobs entail. 
Uh, however, we fear that all of these great amendments will have been lost and will have been made in vain if we, if we can't properly enforce what's promised to the public. A report from October highlighted that nearly half of all contractors were violating the living wage policy, and employers have to, have to believe that the ordinance will actually be enforced or else many will choose not to follow the law as evidenced by the, uh, the report that came out last October. Uh, filling, the, the, filling the two staffing positions provides an atmosphere of trust and accountability and ensures that city resources and taxpayer dollars are not wasted in vain. And speaking of ensuring accountability um, and taking care of taxpayer uh, dollars, I want to talk about the second issue as well, which is to um, fund the full-time position for enforcement of the property value protection ordinance as well, which was called for by council members Leitner, Cole, Alvarez, and Emerald. Uh, Mayor Faulkner's proposed budget includes the funding for the position, and we'd like to ask that you simply maintain that funding. Uh, enforcement for the property value protection ordinance ensures that banks are good neighbors and makes sure that foreclosed properties do not become a source of blight or hazards. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Katya Rodriguez, followed by Monica Munger.